Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions, such as, what are my opinions on Hadinki's recent financial struggles? And Mont Blanc, is it exciting and undervalued? All that and more in today's episode. Now, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing my Nomos um, ooh, Tango Mat GMT, my travel watch. And that's because uh, on Wednesday, I go to Europe and the Far East for a buying trip here for Delray Watch. So also, guys, for a couple weeks, video might be very slow to release. I wanted to let you know, but I certainly will keep you updated. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. A bunch of cool inventory came in, including an unworn AP Royal Oak, ultra thin in rose gold, unworn, as I said, and the least expensive one available in the country. A Breitling Super Hotion uh, Heritage Chronograph two-tone also the least expensive in the country and a very rarely seen Mont Blanc heritage mono pusher chronograph with a salmon dial absolutely love it what a beautiful watch this is and all of this can be found along with way more at delraywatch.com the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch link in description below so anyway guys i'm sure you know how it works by now these are the questions you asked me on my Instagram account at Federico Talks Watches. A few times a month, a picture goes up. You can ask your question there. When I get enough questions, I take it down. Please do not DM me as I do not check them. Let's start in no particular order with Max Sabatka. Howdy, Fed. What is your favorite men's watch from Chopard? I actually adore Chopard, especially the LUC collection. A lot of people might not know that, even though I think the most beautiful watch they ever made was the LUC 1860, um, discontinued probably 10, 15 years ago, though they did remake it recently. Though I love most of the LUC collection, very high-end movements, very elegant watches, and on the pre-owned market, a hell of a bargain. Guru Max says, what is so exciting about Mont Blanc? Can we consider them underrated and great value for the buck? A lot is exciting about Mont Blanc, and they're definitely great value, particularly in the secondary market. Mont Blanc, a pen maker, has, owned by Richemont though, has been making some very handsome watches recently. And they run the gamut from very inexpensive lower-end pieces, uh, or inexpensive luxury pieces, to extremely high-end complications. Mont Blanc bought the Minerva Chronograph Factory, so their chronograph calibers, uh, especially the Minerva ones, are very high-end. I also love their design language. Very vintage-inspired, very classic, using colors such as salmon. Uh, and yes, while not inexpensive, brand new, not a brand that holds great value, which means for a watch geek like me and maybe you, you can pick up a beautiful, very special watch, depending on the model, for not a lot of money. I think Mont Blanc is definitely a sleeper, and sleepers don't stay sleepers forever. Watchfan427. What's your opinion about the latest struggles of Hadinki, and how does it signal a change in the watch industry business model going forward. This is interesting, um, and I don't think it signals a change in the watch industry. I just think, Mon, uh, not Mont Blanc, excuse me, Hadinki messed up. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, Hadinki recently fired a pretty big portion of their workforce or made redundant. Um, this was reported on the news. Uh, and there's multiple reasons for that. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying it's all speculation. I haven't spoken to Hadinki. I am a Hadinki fan and reader for the most part. But I think Hadinki's changed too much over the years. Hadinki um, was a blog, then became a retailer. Uh, and then they purchased Crown & Caliber, which is another watch retailer who was struggling. And then they were purchased by LVMH. What are the problems with Hadinki's business model as a layman looking in from outside? Well, multiple things. Firstly, I think from the content perspective, 
they are ostracizing or ignoring their core audience. Their content recently has been much more fashion forward, avant-garde, and I get it, they're trying to expand, trying to go for a, a more of a Vogue fashion magazine, but at the same time, while they're trying to get these new customers, they've annoyed, or maybe not annoyed, but pushed away the readers that have been there from the beginning. I know I used to check Hadinki multiple times a day. Now I check it once every four or five days, just because most of the content doesn't speak to me. And you know what? It's too fashion forward. It's too modern. It's not as technical as it used to be. I am just not a fan of a lot of the new content, and I'm not alone in this. I think a lot of people agree. Then, since they've become a retailer uh, and accept advertising money from other brands, and maybe are, since they've been owned by LVMH, they are very, very critical. Now, I've kind of become famous for being critical, or infamous rather, and some people say I'm too critical, and I get it. But what kind of media outlet can't say something bad about something they're reviewing. Everything is is good. All news is good news. And I'm sorry, but that is just not something that comes off as genuine to me. I think the writing is excellent, but I do think, um, you know, they need to be a lot more critical about some of the things they review. And then last but not least, in the watch business model side of things, they're just overinflated. Their costs are too high. They've been through a lot of famous CEOs. They have a large staff, offices in Tribeca, New York, from when I last heard. Uh, I think they still have offices in Atlanta. Their costs are too high for their business. What happened to running lean and mean? Now, I don't know how much Hodinkee's revenue is, but I have an idea, and I have an idea of their costs. And the two just don't compute. They were pushing too much for growth. Uh, they expected the market to stay strong for too long. They were pushing too much into the technology. And you know what? It backfired. And they got to fire people because they're not making any money. Not to mention their algorithm. I've had so many people call me recently that they've gotten offers from Crown & Caliber. Uh, now, Crown & Caliber is owned by Hodinkee. Very high offers. And they send their watch in. And, oh, they, the watch is rejected because it needs service. Then they send the watch to me, and the watch doesn't need service at all. It passes my inspection just fine with my watchmakers. So either they're even more out of money than, than they let on, or something is just wrong with this offer algorithm. Because they, be, they seem to be giving out these super high offers on watches, but then they don't actually pay. They just reject the watch when it comes in. I think their AI system, the new thing they're building, just doesn't work. Uh, Hadinki, I really hope they get their shit together because they're a mainstay in the watch community. As I said, I'm still a fan, but these changes happening, they are not for the better, and I think they need to refocus their attention on their core audience. They need to cut the fat, which is what they're doing now. And if they want to be a dealer, they need to focus on buying, selling, keeping customers happy. And, you know, technology is a beautiful thing, but you can't automate everything. This business has and needs a personal touch, and AI ain't going to fix it for you. That is just my overview of that situation. By the way, Hadinki, if anybody watches it, which you may, you may not, I don't mean to be overly critical. I genuinely am a fan. I just think there's too many cooks in the kitchen. And, and you know, focus on what you used to be, you know, and stop trying to become a behemoth. Because guess what? There's a lot of other big companies out there in the watch world that are not doing too well either. It's not always greener on the other side. R. Hanzo. Hey, Fed, what are your thoughts on the Longines Master Collection? Cheers. I love the Longines Master Collection. It's always been a collection of very elegant watches that offer complications for a, a very reasonable price. Yes, they're not perfect. They're quite unrefined. The straps are awful. All their alligator straps are awful. The buckles are generic designs. And the cases are usually mono finish. However... You get chronographs, flyback chronographs, annual calendars, moon phases, 
all in classic proportions, classic designs for extremely reasonable prices. So I understand that they're not super refined because they're built to a price point. But basically, what do I think? I'm a fan. I really, really like them. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And remember, guys, couple weeks, bear with me. I'm going to be on the road, but I will be back and releasing content soon. Thank you so much and take care.